Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Sunday, I hope that you are off to a great start and that you are planning on enjoying the day. I am on the way to the gym this morning. Uh, I have some things set out for me. I'm looking forward to enjoying this day myself, uh, but I did want to stop by and talk to you. First and foremost, you guys see uh, the intro to this video so you know that we are still in the midst of a fundraiser. Um, and the work that we're doing in the community, the work that we're doing in the area of research and program development, program implementation uh, for both young black males, young black females, and the community in general is absolutely necessary. We are more than 20 years in the game as the Odyssey Project. I've been doing this for over 30 years. We need your support. Um, by the grace of God and by an unwavering commitment from myself, we have been able to, we have been able to sustain a, a constant push, but there's so much work to be, do, to be done and we have the capacity in uh, awareness and knowledge in strategy to do it. What we don't have is the resources to do it on a national uh, level to scale it out the way it needs to be scaled out in order to have an impact. So with that being said, I'm challenging everyone to give. Now I'm going to talk about something. Some people might get in their feelings. Some people may disagree. And all of that's good. Uh, you have a right to feel the way you feel. You have a right to your opinion. I tend to hang around facts and I draw conclusions from those facts. And, um, if you choose to disagree with it, then you must be able to examine those facts or discover new facts that offer an alternative uh, conclusion or uh, assessment of what, what I'm saying and on any given thing. I don't play with my feelings or I don't lead with my feelings, maybe a better way to say it. I come with what I see. I present, I learn, and it's been so important to my success in life, whether it's been what I've done in the community, what I've done as an author, as a speaker, as a businessman, whatever. It's because I put my feelings aside. I'm aware of my feelings, but I want to know why I feel a certain way. I'm that person. I don't just go with the feelings. I want to know why I feel that way. What is the cause? I discover the cause. I discover the source of the feelings. I can change the feelings at the source. You're never going to really truly experience healing or improvement or find the solution playing around with the symptoms. And so that's that's that. But here, don't forget to give. Now let me move into this. There are some things that blacks are exceptionally good at, none of which add to the betterment or empowerment of the collective or individuals. We are unbelievably good at identifying everything other blacks do wrong without ever offering solutions or alternatives. We are remarkable in that. We are good at defending the very system that we constantly complain uh, is oppressing us. We go out of our way to defend. We are real good at taking on the fights of others and 
running to the defense of others. None of those groups in turn ever turn around and stand with us when it's time for us to make our moves and make our stands. We are unbelievably good at consumerism. We spend so much money into that same economy that funds the power of the very people we claim are oppressing us. As I often say, we're the only group that I know of in history that has funded or financed their own demise. Uh, we are exceptionally uh, good at competing with one another, especially as black men, but even now black men and black women are competitive instead of becoming unified and standing together. We are remarkably astute at being victims and holding on uh, to pass hurts instead of seeking healing and empowerment. You can never execute power from a position of victimhood. We are astute at doing that. We are at, uh, astute at expecting and expecting our enemy to educate our children to reclaim their power from our power from them. We literally expect our enemies to empower our children to compete against theirs. Uh, and we do it consistently and we do it without thought. Uh, we are constantly operating in a vein that does not produce results that we say we want. We are remarkable for quoting some of the great minds within the black community. We are in, 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 in talking about how awesome they are and sharing their quotes and creating memes. We are horrible at following through on what we've learned from them or what we have seen and should have learned from them. And I could go on and on and on about the things we do that work against us. The old African proverb says that there's no enemy on the inside. The enemy on the outside can do us no harm. And that's one of the things that we are going to have to really truly look at. Where's the enemy within? We, we don't want to address the real issues. We don't want to address incest. We don't want to address fratricide. We don't want to address intimate partner violence. We don't want to address extreme poverty and consumerism. We don't want to address the individualism that has set in and totally destroyed the village. We don't want to address those things that cause us to sit up and uh, lose sight of the things that should matter to us and it has cost us dearly. My hope is that we at some point change this. I am challenging you, my brothers and sisters. Gain an understanding of how things work. Gain an understanding of the things that are working against you. Gain an understanding of things that can work in your favor. Gain that understanding and then move accordingly. Train your children to do better at the things that you have failed at. Train them to be aware of what they're capable of. Isolate them from any suggestion that they are somehow inferior um, somehow inferior uh, to whites. Do that. Um, I want to, as best as I can, encourage you to understand that we are not stuck in a situation that we can't get out of. We are choosing not to move in a way that will get us out of it. We literally allow them to set the paradigms. We allow them to set the standards, the, the, the path. And then we try to operate based off of the standards and the paths and the rules of engagement that they set that are meant to benefit them. And we don't ever seek our own path. We don't use our unbelievable imagination and creativity to create alternatives that work for us. We have yet to truly grasp the idea that it's probably going to be us creating our own system, our own table, our own power source, our own funding systems that are going to be the answer and the solution to what 
uh, they have put in place to keep us at bay, to keep us harmed. We've got to be willing to ask the questions as to why, as to why um, the wealth gap, the racial wealth gap is com consistently widening. Although the illusion of blacks doing better uh, is at the table. Let me explain something to you. And it, it, it should be obvious, but it isn't. They play the numbers games with us. They play the 1.4 trillion. And I, I, I talk about this in my, my 25th book. Uh, I'm already releasing book number 26, by the way. And we're going to talk about that some other time. But um, I talk about it in book number 25, The War on Black Wealth, Breaking the Code of Generational Wealth. I talk about how they use 1.4 trillion in buying power to give the illusions that blacks are doing so much better than they think they are. And, that they can, and the truth of the matter is, number one, that buying power is not wealth that's buying power. Most of our buying power comes from credit. So actually, as we buy using that power, we're assuming more debt. And so our debt works against our wealth. The number one enemy of wealth is debt. So that when you take on more debt, you reduce your wealth. So one of the ways that the wealth gap is wide, uh, widening is that we're assuming more, we're assuming debt at a more rapid rate than they are, number one. And then there are a number of other things, but let me explain something else to you. And we can get into all of this. Um, another thing is power in the sense of wealth and money is relative. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the idea that you have a certain amount of money or you've accumulated a certain amount of wealth doesn't automatically translate into power in the total structure. It may translate to power within the vein of where you're operating within the unclave, the small unclave in which you move. But when we're talking about national power, global power, then you must understand something wealth is relative which which this is what i mean one million dollars sounds great everybody wants to be a millionaire but one million dollars in comparison to a hundred million dollars or in comparison to a billion is nothing so when you have millions but they have billions you still have no power so you've got to understand how we move now we spend 577 billion just in the holiday season alone from uh from uh halloween through christmas we spend 570 something billion dollars every year now granted all of that is not actual asset a lot of that is debt something we've got to stop and i can go on and on and on of how we work against ourselves and um you know i created the legacy wealth uh, academy uh to teach this in great detail, taking lessons from some of the greatest mind, minds and investments in finance, in wealth building, uh, and so forth. And here we are. Um, we're going to have to do better. And that's just one area. There's so many different areas. I've talked about them. I've written about them. I've lectured about them. I've created programs to try to intervene. Uh, I'm about action. So I don't just, I'm not this guy that travels around lecturing and getting paid and doing nothing. I spend more time actually doing than I do lecturing. Uh, but I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to create programs. I'm trying to make it so that it can be studied and be applicable and people can put it to use because if we don't, we're going to consistently see the same situation where we see things happening that we want to do something about, but we don't have the power. Power is assumed through a process and it's time that we start operating in that process uh, and, and, and working on the things that we say we want. Uh, it's one thing to say something, it's another thing to pursue it. And on that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Don't forget to show your love and support for the work that we're doing in the black community. Uh, the Odyssey Project, Black Man Lead, uh, our program for uh, abused women, uh, domestic violence, uh, incest, uh, and so much more mental health programs and so much more. So again, I'm challenging you uh, to step up and show your love and support on that note. I am getting out of here and heading into the gym, getting today's workout out of the way. Thanks so much. Thank you.
Thank you.